nothing I love more than a relaxing round of frolf. That's frisbee golf for those of you not in the know. And we're going to need all the relaxation that we can get while we talk about our next hair raising topic, abnormal placentation. For this lesson, I mean, uh, frolf course, all of the frisbee target baskets are going to represent the internal cervical os. Oh look, there's one right there. First up is placenta previa and its related disorders. Placenta previa is when the placenta completely covers the internal cervical os, just like this frisbee is completely covering the frolf basket. This is a huge bummer because the placenta is blocking the fetus's exit. Also, it really increases the risk for major maternal hemorrhage, so this condition has to be treated with care. There are a few other conditions related to placenta previa. A partial placenta previa is when the placenta only covers part of the cervical os, just like the second frisbee is only partially covering the basket. A low-lying placenta is when the placental edge falls within 2 centimeters of the internal os, but doesn't cover any part of the os. And a vasa previa is when part of the umbilical vessels run through the amniotic membrane and then run over the internal cervical os, just like these ribbons are doing to this third frolf basket. Vasa previa is a super dangerous condition because these vessels aren't protected by the cushiony umbilical cord and its Wharton's jelly, so it's very easy for them to tear right open, which would cause fetal exsanguination and potentially fetal death. Next up is the placenta accreta spectrum of diseases. This spectrum refers to conditions in which the placenta is abnormally adherent to the uterus, which is why this frisbee over here is lying on top of a mud patch made of muscle fibers. Unfortunately, rates of these diseases are rising, most likely in response to increasing C-section rates. Placenta accreta is when the chorionic villi are morbidly attached to the myometrium instead of the decidua basalis. This makes it very difficult to separate the placenta from the uterus at the time of delivery, and often trying to do so results in massive maternal hemorrhage. A placenta in creta is when those chorionic villi penetrate into the myometrium, which, as you can imagine, means it's even more stuck to the uterus than an accreta. Sheesh, we just can't catch a break. Throw a par 3 our way. Next thing you're gonna do is tell me there's something worse. Oh, oh, what's that? There is? A placenta per creta is when the placenta grows through the uterine serosa, just like this pink frisbee is going through this sign. Hope whoever threw that yelled, four. Oftentimes, the placenta will invade into surrounding structures, such as the bladder. Man, that sucks more than when those golfers kicked us frolfers off Augusta for some tournament they had in April. But I digress. While the exact cause for the placenta accreta spectrum is unknown, the hypothesis is that there's an abnormal interface between the endometrium and the myometrium, usually secondary to a uterine scar from surgery, which causes abnormal implantation of the placenta. The biggest maternal risk of both placenta previa and the placenta accreta spectrum is massive, massive maternal hemorrhage. Previa's potentially hemorrhage if the cervix starts to dilate, which can cause the placental vessels to shear and exsanguinate. The accreta spectrum can cause massive hemorrhage at the time of delivery if an attempt is made to separate the placenta from the uterus. As we'll discuss later in this sketch, spoiler alert, the treatment for the accreta spectrum is total hysterectomy.